I'm Julianne DeLynn Hatton, and you're listening to Faith and Reason on the Mormon Faircast. This series will discuss the Prophet Joseph Smith and the authenticity of the gospel he restored. I'll be speaking with Michael R. Ash, author of the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Welcome, Michael Ash. Hi, Julianne. Today we're talking about the land of Jerusalem. Yes, the land of Jerusalem. Interesting topic. <laughs> What's in Alma 7.10? Well, Alma 7.10 is, is prophesying about Christ's birth and says that Jesus, the Son of God, will be born of Mary at Jerusalem, which is the land of our forefathers. What do the critics say? Well, right away the critics you know, jump on what any Christian normally would jump on and says, wait a minute, you know, Jesus wasn't born in Jerusalem. He was born in Bethlehem. You know, we read about that in, in Matthew and, uh, you know, every, every child, you know, you watch any of the Christmas shows that come on December, we know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, not in Jerusalem. So how would you respond to the critics? The critics often claim that Joseph Smith was actually uh, almost genius is that he went to the library, studies things about the ancient old world, new world, that he sponged information about Egyptology and, and ancient seafaring. And, and all these, anytime there's an evidence brought forth to support the Book of Mormon, they say, well, Joseph Smith must have learned that somehow, you know, because obviously he's not a prophet. So he had to learn it from sponging from the environment and books, whatever was out there. And yet the same Joseph Smith, they claim, was too dumb to know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem instead of Jerusalem. So he's smart enough on one hand, but dumb enough on the other. And so Dr. William Hamlin calls this the idiot savant paradox of Mm anti-Mormonism. If we dig a little deeper, we find that the uh, knowledge that Joseph Smith had on this topic, once again, was way ahead of its times. Because yes, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. However, what's not mentioned in the Bible and what is mentioned in some of the other ancient old world findings that have come forth since Joseph Smith's day is there was a land of Jerusalem and a city of Jerusalem. And the Book of Mormon doesn't get these mixed up. It keeps them straight. Uh, Dr. Hugh Nibley pointed this out many years ago already. He said Christ was born in a village some six miles from the city of Jerusalem. Not in the city, but is what the ancients referred to as the land of Jerusalem. And in 1887, so over 50 years after the Book of Mormon was uh, published, these uh, tablets were discovered called the Tel El Amarna tablets. And in there it talks about the land of Jerusalem and how that it encompassed an area larger than the city itself. Uh, we, we also know from the Dead Sea Scrolls, it talks about the land of Jerusalem as well. And, and like I said, uh, non-LDS scholars recognize this. So this is not something that's all of a sudden created uh, by Mormons. Um, there was uh, another scholar that pointed out that coins from an area talked a little bit about uh, uh, Jerusalem and its vicinity and, and, and how it encompassed a larger land. I live in the city of South Ogden. But when I'm out of state visiting people, I don't tell people South Ogden, I tell people Ogden. I mean, it's, there's touching on borders there. In fact, my mail comes delivered to Ogden. A lot of it doesn't even say South Ogden on it. And this is kind of what's going on there. But again, in Joseph Smith's day, um, he, he could have said in the city of Jerusalem, and he would have been wrong, or he could have said in Bethlehem, but that would have been wrong as well. Because if he would have said Bethlehem, that would have been out of character for how the ancient people would have described the overall vicinity as the land of Jerusalem. So it's kind of like New York, New York, right? Yes, exactly. Good example. I live in New York. There's New York and there's New York City. Right. Right. And and this was, like I said, even a smaller area, basically, in that. I mean, we were talking, like I said, six miles. That's about how far I am from my uh, physical job, which is technically in Ogden. I live in South Ogden, but Ogden is kind of the the overall city that encompasses the area. And so, you know, like I said, for for local people, we might talk about the little cities around there, but out of state, it's we live in Ogden, Utah. This is a pretty significant response to the critics. Yeah, it's very significant because, like I said, if Joseph Smith was was uh, making this up, he would have used the knowledge that every child in his day knew that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Yeah, Micah 5, Matthew 2. Sure. 
yeah, it, critics claim that he was just cribbing from the Bible and from the books around him. Well, that's obvious that he wouldn't have made this mistake. It's just mentioned in passing. The Book of Mormon doesn't make a big deal out of this. It just, like I said, in passing is to kind of nonchalant, uh, which suggests that's how the Book of Mormon writers actually understood this, the land of Jerusalem. And, and it fits perfectly with what we know of the you know 6th century B.C. from that time of how they would describe the land. Thank you, Michael Ash. Thank you, Julianne. Thanks for listening to Faith and Reason on the Mormon Faircast. I'm your host, Julianne Delin Hatton, inviting you to keep the faith. Michael R. Ash is the author of the book, Shaken Faith Syndrome, Strengthening One's Testimony in the Face of Criticism and Doubt, as well as the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Faith and Reason is produced by Tom Hatton with music courtesy of Arthur Hatton. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of Fair Mormon or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You can support this podcast by subscribing to it in iTunes and by rating it and writing a review. Questions or comments can be sent to podcast at fairmormon.org or you may join the conversation at fairblog.org. 